Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Andrew Plays. As always, I am your host, Andrew Ambrose, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. So, so, so far in this series, um, I've been playing a lot of obscure Nintendo games. And with the exception of last, last t the game that we played last time, which was Konami's Magical Tree, I've mostly, I've been mainly focusing on Nintendo, so for today's episode, I decided to take a break from Nintendo and play a game, an obscure game from another famous Japanese company that begins with an N and ends in an O, Namco. Um, I'm pretty sure we're mostly f we're familiar with Namco. They've made such amazing games, such as, well, of course, Pac-Man, but also Galaga, Dig Dug, Zevius, um, Pole Position, um... Tekken, as well as Wonder Momo, Bravo Man, Splatterhouse, and of course, Klonoa. Yes, Nemco, um, v very famous company, very wonderful company. They've made so many great games that are enjoyed by many people all over the world, including myself, and well, today's game, of course, is going to be one of their more obscure titles. Now, this one isn't as obscure as the Nintendo Hudson titles, at least not in my opinion, but they're definitely obscure nonetheless. Today's game, of course, is going to be Warp and Warp. Um, more specifically, the version of Warp and Warp for the Sword M5. Now, Warp and Warp was originally an arcade game Namco made and released in 1981. Uh, but this, this is the um, Sword M5 version. Now, the Sword M5 is another... Japanese microcomputer from the early 80s. It came out in November of 1982 in Japan, although from what I've heard it also was made available in some European territories as well. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And well, it didn't enjoy as much success as other computers on the Japanese market like the Sharp X1, the NEC PC80 series, and the MSX. But it had its fans, and not only that, but it enjoyed a good number of games from both Konami and Namco, um, including, well, Warp and Warp. So, um, that's, I guess, all I have to say about that. Let, let's, let us begin the game. I just gotta make sure I have it all squared away. And let us begin. And as always, I have my trusty NES controller connected to my computer with a USB adapter. Let's get let's get let's get cracking, boys and girls. Okay, so in Warp and Warp, you're this guy with a gun, and there are all these monsters that stick their tongues out, and basically you just well you just walk around and you have to shoot at them. Pretty basic, but pretty fun. And of course, you also have to dodge them shooting missiles at you. And occasionally, there's a green monster that'll come out that if you can shoot it, you'll get a bonus. Um, and once you see that, once that little green thing starts flashing white, and it shows, and it says warp warp on it, um, if you go in there, you'll be warped to a different section where it's a little different because you can drop bombs that explode. Now, I bet you're all saying, wait a minute, this is, this is basically Bomberman, but before Bomberman, because if you know your history, the first Bomberman game came out in 1983, this game came out in 1981, so, um, so basically, Hudson took the idea of placing bombs in a maze from Namco's Warp and Warp. But of course, it was slightly different in Bomberman, because you were destroying bricks as well as your enemies, but it's pretty much the same thing here. Just a little bit more, uh, uh, like like a kind of a prototype sort of thing. But it's very interesting when you think about that sort of thing. So anyway, we have two more monsters left to go. Just gotta shoot them, and then we'll be done with level one. Stage one, I think. Ooh, green monster. Got him. Alright. Stage two. Alright. Yeah, it's 
it's pretty much just the same thing over and over. Nothing, as far as I know, really changes except for, like, the aggressiveness of the monsters. So all you just have to do is just keep doing what you're doing and stay on your toes so that you don't get either shot or run into by these guys. This game, um, did actually see a U.S. release, but Namco had to license it off to some other U.S. company. But, the game, there is a U.S. version of the arcade game. Um, as far, but as far as I, but as far as I know, there weren't any home ports for the United States, only for Japan, like, there was, of course, a version for MSX, as well as here on the Sword M5, but also, I think, for the PV-1000 from Casio, Either, it's either the PV-1000 or the 2000, I can't remember exactly, but either one of those two. And well, yeah, this game was put on a variety of plat- a variety of platforms. Not like a whole lot, but there were a- there's a pretty decent amount of platforms to play this game on, and well, there's even a Famicom version that was only released in Japan, but what Namco did with that was they took the game, but they updated the graphics and- just basically overhaul the whole game, but it's still the same game, but it just looks different with different characters, and they called it Warp Man instead of Warp and Warp. I guess they did that to make the game look fresh or cooler in their eyes, but yeah, it's the same game, and that's pretty much the exact same thing they did with Battle City, which is a Famicom port of another obscure Nint um, Namco title, Tank Battalion, from 1980 or 81. But yeah. Ooh, I, I haven't seen- I think- I think I saw that guy in- Did you see that purple one? The guy with the legs that I just killed? I think I saw that guy in Namco's QDQ, which was a- a block-breaking game, uh, made in 1979. Um... But yeah, I remember, I think I saw that guy in that game, and I didn't know he appears in this, so that's pretty cool. Ooh, that little jingle, I mean, we're almost done. Boom. Let's, stage four. I know, because the flag's on the side. Ooh. 10,000 and I beat the high score. The enemies continue to rain hell upon my head. or get really close and then drop and run away immediately. That was easy. Oh god, oh, I didn't see that. Ooh, that's another unfamiliar face. Ooh, stage five. I bet this is where it gets even harder. Where shit really hits the fan. But it's actually funny. Uh, speaking of which, mentioned Pac-Man earlier. The 40th anniversary of Pac-Man is actually coming up very soon. Like, uh, Pac-Man was first released in Japan, uh, May 22nd, 1980, or, so, uh, and well, right now it's May 2020, so in a few days, May 22nd is going to be the 40th anniversary of Pac-Man. I just find that crazy. That's a, that's an event I've been waiting for for years. Oh shit. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited, and actually, I'm planning on doing an Andrew Reviews episode celebrating the 40th anniversary. Um, I don't know if- I'll, I'm gonna do something related to Pac-Man, but I don't know if I'm gonna play the original Pac-Man or, like, a different Pac-Man game or something. Maybe, like, an obscure port of Pac-Man. 
for like an obscure Pac-Man game or something. Or an obscure port of an obscure Pac-Man game. I don't know, but I don't know what I'll do, but I'll definitely try to do something on the 22nd of May, which is in 10 days. As a matter of fact, so I'm excited. Warped just in time. Not time to play some bombs. Oh, Christ. Oh, shit. Aww. Oh. Oh god. Well, game over. But that was a really that was a that was a really good run. I made it to a stage six, and I made it to like eighteen thousand points. Well, I think that's enough for today. It felt it felt a little short, but it was it was fun. It was a it was a unique little game, and highly recommended to anyone who's looking for some good early eighties arcade action. So yeah, that's warp and warp for the Sword M five. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andrew Ambrose, and I'll catch you later.